Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends, my name is Kim and this is Flosstube number 20. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a fair bit to share with you again today. I have two finishes, two new starts, and progress on one of my whips. Lots of goods to teach at chat, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, many of you will recognize that the stitching I have on the, behind me today is all of my Blackbird designs, uh, ones that I have managed to stitch since I discovered Blackbird. Um, this is just my small way of saying thank you and recognizing the incredible talent that Barb and Alma have shared with us and so many hours spent enjoying these as I stitched them and then now as I get to display them in my home. I have quite a few charts that I hope to still get to. Um, I only actually started stitching Blackbird. I, uh, I kind of did an Instagram um, check my feed to see because I really didn't know. And, and it said that June 23rd of 2018 is the first post I have of stitching a Blackbird. And it's actually this one here, which is the And Blossoms as the Rose um, from that book. Um, and then I followed it up with this one right here, which is Sing a Song. Yeah, Sing a Song of Seasons. And I started that in July. And then I think this was actually my very first sell was the one right over here, which is Tis the Season from the Home for the Holidays book. And I started that a little bit. I think it was September or so of that year. So this is what I've managed to stitch in the three years since I started. And like I said, I, I hope that I get to do many more. I actually have a couple of more. So ones that are in progress. Um, let me just quickly show those as well. I started this, but I haven't finished the drum portion. And um, this one is Bells on Christmas Day from that book. And then one more, which is Peace and Plenty. And this is from the Sisters book. So these are the three that I have currently. And then one of my new starts uh, I will share with you at the end is also a Blackbird. So um, I hope that you will enjoy these beautiful designs as I go ahead and continue to share more of my love of stitching with you as we continue on. Um, okay, so let's see. First, I guess I'm going to uh, talk about my first finish since we were together last, and that's going to be this one here, which is um, Scarlet by the Scarlet House, and this is the um, Strawberry House. Can you see it okay? Um, this was a sal that I did with my friend Friends, actually, uh, Shelly Kiexich, hi Shelly, and Natalie Home, Sweet Home Handmade, hi Natalie, and then Brenda Holzman on Instagram, hi Brenda, she joined in with us as well. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, those, I checked the hashtag and that's, who. Um, and Brenda just posted this morning, she said I could share her finish. So let me share that with you really quickly before I finish talking about this one. Um, so this is Brenda's finish. Isn't that fabulous? I love it, Brenda. Thank you for letting me share. Okay, so I stitched this on, I'm pretty sure this was, I know it was 40 count, um, this was that R&R, &R, um, hold on, I wrote it down, R&R, &R, 18th century rook, and I hope that's the right one, <laughs> and I stitched this um, with, I think, no, I think, you know, I talked about some of the things I changed the last time, I did the uh, queen bee for the yellow, and okay, what I wanted to talk about though is I know I shared with you, I'm gonna cover my face up here for a second and get really close. Can you see on the vine there, uh, what I done is I started with endive. I changed the piney woods, which is the call for, which is this dark green here at the very bottom. Okay, so that's piney woods. And I just wasn't showing up on my fabric. And so I wasn't gonna pull all of that out. And what I did was just take one strand of the piney woods and go over the stitching that was already there uh, with one strand of piney woods. Um, I don't mind it. I, it made me laugh because I was thinking of, I don't know if you watch Floss Toss, um, Rachel and Sue. Hey ladies. And uh, I think there was one time where, I don't remember what the question was, but Sue, no, let's see. Rachel was asking Sue something about, couldn't you just stitch over it? You know, like whatever she'd done already. And I, I think I burst into to laughter because Sue's response was just kind of like, no. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I do. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
so that I, oh and then you also may recognize that I had the other planter here with the strawberry that I didn't realize was the um the fob the scissor fob and originally I was going to leave that but when it went came to frame this piece I I just couldn't make it work I wanted it to be in either the square or the pillow um and I, I just ended up having to frog it. And let me just tell you that, that that took a while. I was actually kind of encouraged to see that my stitches were in there pretty solid. Of course, it's 40 count, but uh, anyway, it took a long while, a couple of different sessions of sitting there trying to pull that out, but I'm happy that I did. So let me show you what this frame is. So this is actually one of those just, you know, the so it's, you know, it's only got the, the frame this far and then it's hollow with this. So this is the back of the actual display piece, right? And what I thought I was going to do at first was put the piece here, which is why I've only painted the outside edges, and then put this, this actual white portion is just another, it, it was, it fell out of another thrifted frame piece that I had. It like came out in sections and I thought, Ooh, I don't know why I didn't use the entire frame and why I decided just to pull the, this part of it off, but that's what this is, right? And so originally I was going to put it on the back and put the white thing on top of it, but it had have to be really, really flat. It, was, it would be harder for me to just make those kinds of decisions of permanency. And I decided, you know, this is just now on foam core and it's pinned and it's, everything just kind of, all the fabric just kind of folded in the back. And I put a few extra pieces of uh, foam core in the bottom of the box here to build up the depth a bit so that the piece didn't have to sink all the way to the bottom. Um, and then that way it's really not permanent. I originally was going to just hot glue this piece on in the corners because it's very shallow. There's not a lot of room in there. Um, but I would have to be so specific about where I got the glue, how quickly I got it on there, if it's straight. And in the end, I ended up having some leftover, I, you know, scrapbooking days. I had some double-sided, um, very thin tape. And I just add, put a few pieces in each corner and then just press this on. It, it's not going to get any, you know, it's, it's not going to have to endure anything. <laughs> so it should stay fine. And one of the things about this I thought would be nice is because it's so flat on the bottom, I could literally display this, say, on top of a candlestick or something if I wanted some height. This can go in a tear tray. This can sit flat all by itself. Um, I, I'm, I'm really, really happy with this finish, and uh, I really enjoyed stitching this with friends. It was amazing. Oh, did I mention the hashtag was hashtag strawberry house with friends S-A-L. So if you'd like to go over there and check that out, or if you stitch it in the future, I hope that you'll post it to that hashtag so we can continue to enjoy. Okay, so that was my first finish. Um, and then let me go on to my, I think I've told you everything about that one. Okay, let me go on to my next finish. This was exciting for me. I uh, just, I didn't know I was gonna finish it and um, it was a big one for me. So this is Rachel Long. Let me show you the first one or the uh, the original chart first so that you can kind of see how it's charted beautiful design I uh, we talked a little bit last time about how I was going to move some things around um, I just took all the existing motifs I didn't create any or anything and I adjusted the border um, and so let me show you what I came up with and see what you think so here's my Rachel Long I just uh you know, again, I moved this motif down here to fill in that empty space. Um, one of the challenges, I, I showed you how I cut and paste the, the chart together. And one of the challenges is, of course, if you could really see it stitched, you might be able to adjust things ever so slightly. But um, I'm really happy with, I, and once I started stitching on this and made all those adjustments, uh, I could really see the end in sight. Um, and I just, whoops, I'm just seeing if I missed anything there. I actually recognized the last time, oh, I didn't bring it over here to show you, that M. Deflitson, I was showing and I was watching my video back and I and I looked at the part where I was like, I think I missed a portion of that dragonfly's wing. I did. I had to pull it back out and, and add the little bit that I had missed. So I was like, oh, did I miss something on the border there? If you guys ever see anything, go ahead and make sure you let me know. It's easy enough for me to pull stuff out the way I frame. So again, this is not completely 100% uh, pinned or anything. Now let's talk a little bit about this frame. I'm going to share the back with you. I have, I, I don't know where I got this originally or what was in it, but I suspect based on the fact that there's paper and that I had some, um, some determined staples, you know, sharp pointy things that I really had to, to work to get out. This probably had something in it, you know, some sort of a, um, a picture or whatever. And I had to peel all the paper back off and, 
and sand so that the wood wasn't rough, it wouldn't catch on my stitching once I put it in there. I, um, so it looks like it was, I don't even know what color it was originally, but it's been, it was painted white chalk paint at the time that I um, discovered this would work. What I did when I finished is I measured my piece. I took my tape measure and measured my finished piece and started walking around the house. First, I started walking around the house and looking on the walls because that's kind of easier for me to start there uh, to see if I had anything that was even close and thinking, okay, well, what can I adjust or what would I have to adjust? And this had one of our um, our vacation pictures in it. And it was just hanging on the wall in my bedroom. And I was like, oh, I wonder. And it what? It was, it was so perfect. I didn't have to do anything except take that. I'm going to share this with you again. This decor wax. It's looking a little worse for wear now. And I just I thought I start there. And I applied that um, to darken it up. A couple of coats. And I thought, I, I like that. I didn't even need, because, you know, I always thought, do I spray it gold? Or what color is going to look best? But I love this color with this fabric. This is 40 Count Vintage Meadow Rue by Lakeside Linens. So I stitched. Um, several of these are silks, the called for silks. Um, and then, oh, gosh, when I got to the point where I started stitching the, um, the basket, the vase here with the flowers on top, I changed out, I didn't have all those colors and I changed out some of those colors and I was able to use some floss that was gifted to me, some pretty pink floss that was gifted to me by a friend, uh, a while ago. So that was fun to be able to do that. And, um, I don't, you know, just some DMC and some over dyes to fill in, but. I think she's fabulous. I'm super happy with this finish. Um, and I'm looking forward to finding a place for her on the wall. So let me go ahead and set her back here carefully. Okay, I think we're good. Um, let's see. Um, so that was my finish. Then the other, okay, so then I pulled out, right before I finished Rachel, I had pulled out my Mary Hunter. Um, which is also a sal that I'm stitching with my friend Amy. Hi, Amy, Mrs. Flossie, and uh, Carol, Rosebud Stitcher. Hi, Carol. And so we're stitching this under Mary Hunter SAL. And I pulled her out thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll get a finish on Mary. But um, I got distracted. I think that's when Rachel came along and I got distracted by Rachel. So I'm doing pretty well there. Just a bit more of the, uh, the bands going across to fill in. And yeah, one more row of alphabets, I think. One more row of alphabets in the band. So this is the 40 count vintage cedar plank by Lakeside. I don't know if you're getting, I'm gonna see if you can get more of the colors because there's some beautiful pinks and blues and different colors in this fabric. I love her, love, love, love. Okay, so that was my Mary Hunter. What happened next? Let's see, hold on, got my notes here. Okay, so then I got to start uh, our next sal, the Tudor B S A L, and I'm stitching this with, gosh, a lot of you have joined in, but um, my friend Amanda, hi Amanda, from Alba Stitcher, uh, and I started this together, and actually, so Amanda had a terrible accident, and she really injured herself. Um, I'm so sorry, Amanda, I really hope that you're, you're managing. I hope you're not in pain. And, and I, I saw that you did get to start stitching. Um, and I know that I don't think her stitchy spot is really super comfortable or I'm sure she can only spend small amounts of time doing it. But um, anyway, she was able to start as long, like I said, but many of you have, and that's been really, really fun. Um, let me show you, I guess I want to show you my stitching, <laughs> my start. So this is 36 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. It's my first fabric um, by Fox and Rabbit. And I shared with you that April, hi April, uh, stitched it on this fabric. And, and I don't know, I think you used 40 count though, April. Um, this is 36 count. Let me see if I can get in nice and close for you. I was originally going to do the, uh, the DMCs, but when it came time to stitch it, um, I started making adjustments. And so several of these are over dyed, a couple are, I'd like to use up my silks. So a couple of these are silks. Um, I, I, you know, and I love the fabric. Uh, this is super easy to stitch on. It's beautiful. I do find though that it's that, you know, that balance with 36. Um, I don't use two strands on 36. I still only use the one strand. 
And sometimes I, I recognize now going forward, I would think I would prefer 40 count Fox and Rabbit um, over the 36 because I just think with the darker colors, you get a little bit better coverage. Again, it doesn't really bother me that much. Uh, and it's, it's just super easy to stitch on. Um, so I, I'm really, really, really loving this. This is my, also my July cross stitch camp piece. So I think I will be able to finish that uh, probably the next time I pull it out. Um, okay, so let's make sure I shared everything about that. Yes, I think I did. Um, okay, so then the last thing I had to share with you was my new start. Now, I have been wanting to stitch this one since the charts were re-released, and uh, I was actually really prepping to, to start it, and um, I think one of the hardest things for me to decide when it comes to is, is fabric. And so I was really kind of not sure about what fabric I wanted to stitch it on. Um, the other thing was, um, let me show you, I guess, which one I'm talking about first so we can continue chatting about it. So it's the, I have this series and I want to stitch the, all three of them. So there's that one and then this one and this one, right? So trying to decide on fabric, trying to decide if I wanted to stitch the um, alphabet, um, as you noticed, let me share again, there's an alphabet that goes across the top. And my some of my original thoughts were, do I, you know, anytime I can avoid, <laughs> it's not really that complicated, but it's just like, can I avoid it? Uh, will I just stitch the middle portions? Um, and I had decided when I was uh, talking to my friend Misty. Hi Misty, Luminous Fiber Arts. Um, we were chatting about it. Now she had the absolutely brilliant idea. She decided she was going to change. She started stitching the alphabet. I think she got to E and then she changed it and started stitching. Um, she's going to stitch the to everything there is a season and it's from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 um, and I just thought that was a, a terrific idea. So I already knew that if I decided I had to stitch the whole outside, the letters, the alphabet, I would change it to that portion the, to, to reflect the scripture reference. But I still wasn't sure whether I wanted to, I'm gonna share my stitching in a minute, hold on. <laughs> I sure, still wasn't sure whether I needed to stitch the, the, the letters at all. So what happened was I started doing the math. I went on the yarn tree calculator. There's a lot of different ways in which you can figure out what your finished stitch piece will be when you plug in the uh, the stitch dimensions, the number of um, the finished design size. I think this was like 222 by one something. And when I plugged it in, doing the 36 count, the 40 count, you know, what are my options? And it gave me the different sizes of the finished piece. So what I did was I actually thought, I was like, you know what? I have a frame hanging in the garage that I wonder, I just, I wonder, usually I don't look first for frames and, and try to adjust my pieces to them. I usually just stitch them and then, and then go looking. But I just said, I wonder how close that is to fitting the, the sizes of this finished piece. And oops, sorry. And it's this one right here. So it's another thrift store frame. I don't know if I paid that or if it was, you know, half price that day or whatever it was. And it's obviously, you know, and I thought I measured this. If stitching that on the 40 count, with the actual, you know, um, letters around the side, it will fit in here perfectly. And I was like, well, that decided it then for me. I'm gonna stitch the, um, I'm gonna stitch the lettering. So let me go ahead and share that with you now, <laughs> forever before I get to my stitch piece. And this is, I've started this just a couple of days ago and have really, really enjoyed stitching on it. Um, one of the other things I think so far, I'm using all the called for except I changed the color that's in um, the lighter color that you see here in the bird. Um, I went to stitch the, let me move this needle. I went to stitch the flower that's in the top here. You see that flower right there? And it was calling for caramel corn and flax. And I think, can you see, that's where I started the caramel corn. I'm not sure if you can tell how, it's kind of a yellowy orange. And it's, it looks fine, but I just, I wasn't really deciding that was what I wanted to do. And I, I don't think it looked exactly like the chart there. So uh, I was talking to Misty and, you know, she had changed her colors and um, I pulled those out. I, I pulled the DMCs that reflect, um, that they had on the chart, the DMC conversion. I pulled those and basically I just decided to skip the flower for now until I can make a decision. But I did change the, uh, the center portion here to oak by, I think it's Weeks Dye Works. Um, 
and I, I'm happy with that so far. Whether I'll continue that on, that's the same color that's called in the outside portion of the flower. Whether I'll use that, I, I don't think so, but um, I think everything, oh, and I did not realize that they changed from endive at the bottom here, and then as you were stitching somewhere, it changed to dried time, and I was just stitching away. I didn't, I thought all the leaves were just gonna be, and I didn't recognize that the symbol had changed. So um, I might add the, this is all, endive on the leaves and then I might end the put add the dry time up here instead of the call for endive because you can see that the dry time has some of that lighter color in there but uh this is going along really quickly and I'm really enjoying stitching on it so um another another blackbird designs uh, beautiful chart um, okay, so then I think the only other thing I did want to talk, so I shared with you the back of this, this frame, and I just thought I'd talk a little teeny bit more about that and show you some of the things I used to get the frame off. I would probably start with a screwdriver and start, um, you know, piercing the paper to see if uh, it's a little bit thicker cardboard, so that's going to take a little bit of work there. Just to give you an idea of the things I have to go through to get, to get these frames. Uh, I also have one of these, as you can see. Um, again, it's just pointy and it's I can sometimes scrape if I need to scrape. Uh, and then of course inside this, there will be staples or uh, small brad nails or um, some form, something that's gonna require these, right? The wire cutters. And I'm gonna have to grab a hold and yank and pull. And uh, there's a lot that goes in sometimes depending on how, how uh, nicely fastened the pieces. Um, and then of course I will take some sandpaper and uh, a lot of times after doing all of that, pulling out the staples, some of the wood will uh, split and I might have to scrape and say, I definitely sand as much as I can to get everything, you know, run my hand around and make sure everything's as smooth. Because when I put my, um, my linen in there and I start tugging it to adjust it, uh, I don't want it to be, you know, snagging on some of the, the rough pieces of wood. Um, obviously there's a lot of just, you know, wiping everything down to get all the dust and dirt and grime and everything as much as I possibly can. I will, I'm pretty sure that I will be staining the wood here so that it's going to be uh, slightly darker. Um, so I'll probably have to sand that and, uh, and stain it a little bit. Um, I do believe, I think Veronica, hi Veronica, I think you asked me, I didn't get to, to go back. I, I think I saw it flash up quickly <laughs> and I have to go back and try to find, I think she asked if I would talk a little bit about how I measure to adjust frames and uh, which of course made me giggle because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out if I had a really good formula and way of doing that. And if I ever figure that out, I will share that with you. Uh, as of right now, it's just a lot of practicing and, and I because it's gotten so hot and I've not been feeling 100%, uh, I haven't been doing a lot of that lately. I was very successful with this piece right here. I just, that one came out so perfectly. Uh, I do think that who we need to ask to share more of that with us is Colleen. Hi, Colleen from Lockabees. Um, she does, as I've shared before, she's more of like a professional framer and I know that she does take frames and make adjustments as well. Um, so now that she has a little more time, Colleen, hopefully there will be a tutorial that you will share with us on how you measure for your, uh, the angle cuts, you know, and, and all of that. I would love that. I do appreciate, um, she recently shared on her last floss tube that when you're cutting wood, uh, you need to cut a little slower with, and I use a, a mitered chop saw, a compound saw. You need to cut a little slower because you need to let the the saw, the heat, like kind of burn as you're, as you're going through the wood, right? But she had mentioned cutting plastic, which is a question I had is, can I cut plastic? I've been a little fearful to try. Uh, and she mentioned that when you cut plastic, you actually have to cut it very quickly because it will melt the plastic. So uh, again, as soon as it's not 100 degrees outside, I plan on getting out there and, and practicing a little bit more. And of course, I will share with you as I go along. Okay, so I think that... That is, I'm looking around making sure that is all the stitching that I had to share with you. I do have one more uh, Instagram post. If you will bear with me for just a moment. I have one more friend that said I could post this beautiful wall. I hope that you have, are already following. This is Trisha. Um, hi, Trisha. And she just posted this because I want, I told her, I said, I want to repost this. So she just posted her uh, bird wall. She has a bee wall as well, but this is her beautiful bird wall. Oh my gosh, right? I just, so much inspiration there. She's the reason that I have this chart right here. 
and I will be stitching that one, I really hope soon. I, I, so many things I just keep wanting to start. But wouldn't you stitch absolutely everything on that wall, right? And let me see if I can find her bee wall because I think she posted that fairly uh, not too long. Oh, here we go. How about this one, right? So, yeah, lots on there I, I have either stitched or want to stitch. Oh my gosh, so, so beautiful. Okay, so let me take a quick peek. Oh, I didn't mention, so I am stitching the, um, that. so that's the Loose Feathers, the Blackbird. I'm stitching that on 40 count old stationery by Seraphim. It's beautiful fabric. I really love that. One of the things I struggle, I, and I, do, I have all the things, right? Like I have uh, a nice iron, I have the woolen uh, pressing mat, um, but sometimes really getting wrinkles out of my linen, every lat, you know, I just, uh, sometimes I just don't feel as successful as I'd like to be. And uh, I really was kind of strategic about the placement of where I started that piece. Um, there is a, there was like a wrinkle I really just couldn't get out. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this, which is good because it won't really be a concern. But anyway, I started where I started in order to be able to kind of stay under the radar. You know, you want to check for things like slubs um, before you stay, if possible, right? You want to kind of look over your linen and uh, and see where you might be able to best place things if that's if that's an option. But uh, the linen is absolutely beautiful. It's what I stitched. Um, hold on, where is it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's what I stitched. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Uh, same same fabric. Um, so absolutely love that one. Okay, and. I think that's everything. I think we're at the end there of my notes. So I do want to say uh, a big thank you so much to all of you who sent birthday wishes and um, and prayers and just thoughts for the procedure. The, I had that, a big kidney stone and I had to have it uh, zapped. <laughs> and so that was a bit of a thing. Um, I went in on July 2nd. And so my, my, my birthday is July 4th. So all the plans I had all had to be, you know, postponed. That's all. And, uh, I'm just, I'm thankful that I was able to get in and, and, and get it taken care of. Um, I don't do well with anesthesia. So coming out of the anesthesia was a little bit rough. It took it just for the first couple of days after I was, I was still not feeling too great. Um, but I'm on the other side of it now. And, um, everything's going fine. So again, I just, I thank you. I thank you guys so much. Um, it means a lot. It means to, to, you know, I have a lot of, um, we have a very large church family and I'm so, so blessed and so thankful to know that with their prayers and, and all of you guys, it just, it's such a comfort. And sometimes things can be a little scary and it's just really, really a, a sense of comfort and peace to know that so many people are thinking about you and praying for you. So I just really wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I did get a couple, if I can find them here, I did, I did get a couple of birthday cards from friends. Thank you so much. And the one, obviously I always like to share my friend Deborah, my friend I've known my whole life. <laughs> She's a paper crafter and she made me my birthday card. So, um, uh, okay. I think that's all the stitching uh, that I have to share with you this week. I don't, I wonder, you know, maybe I can do a quick little pan in case there's a little bit more here. I think that's as far over as we go there with the Merry Christmas. Let me see if I can tip you a bit this way. And then if I go the other direction, just so you can, I hope that's, I hope that shares everything um, with you there. So thank you again. Uh, I hope to see you guys in a couple of weeks uh, to share more stitching. Uh, as always, I'm going to share some scripture and I hope you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, that's all the stitching. Take care. Okay, so I had uh, two scripture references that I wanna share with you today. And this, the first one just kind of really goes into what I was talking about, you know, knowing that um, people are praying for you and just loving on each other. Um, and so this is going to be John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And then I thought I'd share uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 with you. Um, and we're just, I'm just going to read that. Whew. 
To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weave and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace.